Did you hear that good joke about lawyers? No, neither did I. But what's really annoying about lawyers? Well, let's talk to a lawyer to find out. You're going to meet Nicholas Richardson, Poland's answer to Mr. James Bond. Pow! Welcome to the studio, Nicholas. Thank you, Patrick. Delighted to be here. Well, I'm delighted you're here as well. Now, I see you've got the same tie on as the one you were wearing on a recent TV appearance. Is that a coincidence? Or it is. A, yes, I try and wear a different tie every day, so I don't repeat them during the week. How many ties do you own? Um, I'm not sure, about 40 or 50, something like that. Now, you are known as quite a, uh, a sharp dresser, if you don't mind me saying. Do you take pride in your appearance? Well, yeah, I think if you don't take pride in your appearance, people aren't going to take you seriously. I mean, the other most, more important point, is, I think, is if you make the effort to get dressed, so it's not a criticism of you. <laughs> but it, it actually, you show respect to people you might meet during the day. What you're saying is you're an important person. I've actually taken the trouble to dress to meet, which is actually what Michael Parkinson used to say on his show. They say, why do you always wear a suit when a lot of your guests don't? And he said, I wear a suit because it gives my guest a choice. If I turn up in jeans and a t-shirt or something else, then my guests feel they have to fit in. But if I wear a suit, I'm kind of neutral and they can wear what they like. So have you done that for me? For, I've for done that for you today. I'm, I'm, well, I've done it for two reasons. One, this is how I normally dress. And B, I thought I wanted to give you something to aim for. <laughs> and I will continue to aim for us. For many years, I have been following Nicholas's fashion trend. Very much classic English gent. Well, I think, yeah, well, it's the most comfortable. I don't know about you, and I find if I don't have a jacket, I've got nowhere to put anything. You know, pens, <laughs> papers telephones, keys, all the sort of impedimenta you walk around with. Somebody buy Nicholas a man bag. Times have changed. Well, yeah, well I think, can we just say before, if anybody is watching, they would like to buy me a man bag, please don't buy me a man bag, please buy me something else more useful, because I will not be walking around Warsaw with a man bag, or any other city for that matter. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to send Nicholas a man bag, you can write in the comments, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I'll make sure it gets to him one way or the other. That's very uh, kind. Let us now go to the English question. Nicholas, yes. what is it you do? I'm a lawyer. Um, I'm a lawyer. I'm also vice chairman of the British Polish Chamber of Commerce. I write a blog. I even read the news in English twice a week. For? For Poland Daily, which is an English language, uh, new, a relatively new English language programming, which hopefully, if it all goes well, will expand into more exciting things than the news. So which of those four, I mean, there's four hats, yes? You've got lawyer, chairman, or vice chairman of the chamber, yep. uh, blogger. Yes, blog. I've been doing the blog, actually. This week's blog, which I'm writing at the moment, will be the 317th weekly piece I've written, I think. So you pass the, the more than 50 articles that most bloggers get well, to. Yeah, I, I, actually, that's the amazing thing. I, would, I thought I would not have the inspiration to keep going. But it, because I really blog about current affairs and news and politics and that sort of thing, then the, 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 the politicians and everybody else keep us very occupied. So there's always a new story every week. Let me tell you, my friends, Nicholas is some writer, and he's pretty good at television. For someone has experienced. For me to say that, that definitely. You're very, means you're very kind. Well, uh, uh, just for saying the facts as they are, Nicholas. Well, well, let's talk about a uh, lawyer. How is it such a sharply dressed, pinstripe suited uh, lawyer ends up in Warsaw, of all places? Well, many years ago, I worked in the city of London, and, and I thought, and the, things were changing in this part of the world. And I thought oh, it would be fun to see this part of the world for a couple of years and then return back to London, because a lot of people at that stage in their legal career spend a couple of years outside London. So I came here and uh, lacked the imagination to, <laughs> to leave, you said. <laughs> no, inertia, two things. I think inertia sets in. That's the first thing. The second thing is that time passes very quickly. So if something you think happened last week actually happened 10 years ago. And you find that you get daily life gets quite involved in, and years and years pass. Okay. And then you find the longer you stay somewhere, you, the more useless you are for anybody else anywhere <laughs> else. In the world. What, so what year did you move to Warsaw? The end of 1994. I mean, there are probably some of your viewers who weren't even born then. This is, <laughs> this is absolutely shocking. Can you describe what it was like, your first impressions of coming to Poland? And I guess also getting into the legal world? because Well, my first, my literally first impression was that it was, it was the, a Sunday evening. And the plane, actually I came on a plane, British Airways from Manchester. And the plane arrived at a Kench airport, which was the old airport, not the modern one it is now. And it was raining and it was gloomy. And I thought to myself... What have I done? <laughs> Why? Why? And I went, found my way to the Victoria Hotel where they, they were sort of put me up initially. And, and I sort of went to the, found my way to the Victoria Hotel dining room and, and had a meal. I was the only person eating the hotel, I think, that night. <laughs> and the next day I found my way to the office. And I thought, crikey, this is really weird. The office being? The, the, uh, Baker McKenzie, which was yeah. the firm I, I worked for at that stage. And it was a, a nice old palace on Litsatruga. They've moved several times since and obviously to more modern office accommodation. And I think it was just, you know, just a very strange place to be. 
Uh, for in, instance, in those days, it's simple things we take for granted now, like machines you can get money out on the street corners. There was one in those days outside the American Express office on Krakowski Shed Mischief, which was the only one. Otherwise, you could go to a local bank, hand over your credit card, and they would give you some money. But that was a fa fascinating process. It took about half an hour and involved half the bank. <laughs> and they would have lots of bits of paper to sign, but it worked. Uh, and, and the physical landscape of the city was very different as well. Yeah, the, a lot of the buildings we take for granted just weren't there. Do, do the people inspire you? I mean, you've seen that transformation I mean, 94 from you know, here to, to there. It's such yes, a I think just, I mean, the younger, obviously, as you would expect, the younger generation, particularly those who uh, you know, have, have seen some other parts of the world, are very talented and very enthusiastic. I still think there's still a lot of the old thinking uh, where people think that being stubborn is a, is a national, you know, has become a national obsession, and they think that being stubborn is they're achieving something. It's sort of like the guy, so I sum, they're rather cruel, and it's not meant to be cruel, but I summarise it this, you know, you're standing in traffic, and, and the, there's a side road trying to turn into the traffic, and the guy sort of is thinking, should he block you? And he thinks, okay, well, if I step back and let you, let you in, I'm going to be home five minutes later. But if I block the other guy, then everybody in Warsaw is going to be home an hour later, so I've gained 55 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and in a funny, that's rather cruel, but in a funny sort of way, that seems to be sort of some of the mentality here amongst some of the, the older generation. Let's now talk about lawyers. Now, because we have rather challenged, we both agreed that talking about legal issues not necessarily the most explosive television of all time. No, it's not the most. No, not. I mean, people. Their idea of lawyers on television are the sort of the series they say, like Suits and Suits. Yeah. yeah, American Law, which always seems very exciting. Yes. Which is very different from reality. The reality does seem to be a little bit different. What annoys you about lawyers and lawyers in Poland? Well, no, I think what annoys me about lawyers generally, and, and that probably annoys me about most people as well, is if they don't have a <laughs> sense of humour. You know, and I think a lot of lawyers take themselves very seriously. And I think that a lot of lawyers are actually quite arrogant. Um, and I, 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 particularly when I first came here, I was struck by how young lawyers, you know, very young lawyers, would get their secretaries to phone a client over abroad. Okay, they could argue that the telephone system didn't work, but I don't think anybody actually told them the negative effect that has if you're running a company somewhere and some little young lawyer from abroad, his secretary comes on the phone and says, I have Mr. X for you. It yeah. just creates a completely wrong impression. So I think that, you know, and people also, I think, what they don't like about lawyers, they feel lawyers are very expensive, they feel lawyers don't really understand what they want, and you go to a lawyer because you have a problem, generally, and people don't like problems. You, know, you go to the doctor if you have a problem, he gives you some medicine, you feel better two days later. You go to the lawyer, you have a problem, he sends you a bill and you feel worse two days later. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and, and maybe think, the problem but I think, but I think also the problem is not just the lawyers, I think a lot of the problem is the clients don't always know what they want. And a lot of lawyers, sorry, the, the serious point I'm making, is that a lot of lawyers are not very good in this part of the world, although they're getting better, in analysing the question. So that the client may say, what's 2 plus 2? And the answer is 4. But a good lawyer will say, well, hang on, 2 plus 2 is 4, but actually the question you really need to ask me is what's 6 minus 3? Yeah. And, and that comes with experience. And I was brought up you know, working in the city in a commercial legal environment, so I understood what businessmen really wanted, which is an answer as quickly as possible to get the job done without going off at a tangent and writing a legal textbook. Whereas here, I think people take a great pride in their knowledge, and so they want to tell you everything they know, whether or not it's relevant to your matter. Let's talk about common mistakes. What are the common mistakes that Polish companies make when dealing with lawyers? Well, I think one is, as I just mentioned, is, is not phrasing the question properly. Um, and also, another one is not actually telling you the full story. Because if you don't know everything that's re relevant, you can't actually give proper advice. Um, and then people say, oh, well, I want, you know, I want a cheap answer. Can you just give me a, a general answer? And, you know, and, and that may, that's always a trap you must avoid falling into. Because they won't actually, when they want that, they won't actually have told you the thing you really need to know to give them the proper answer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the quick fire round. DJ, spin the track. <laughs> Favourite place in Poland? Uh, the the Wielkie Theatre. I like opera. Nice. Favourite place in Warsaw? Uh, same place, actually. Sorry, oh, favourite place. Sorry, if we're. Sorry. Favourite non Vieki theatre in, in. In Poland? Yeah. I like the seaside here. The Hell Peninsula is very nice. I like the, the contrast between the sea on one side and the lagoon on the other side. Favourite season in Poland? Uh, probably. I think summer is nice because it's warm and you can wander around. Although, actually, I also quite like winter because it's actually quite exciting when it's minus 50. You can't have your cake and eat it. Because well, I can. I, I can. I mean, that's the whole point. I've been listening to Boris Johnson. I do want my cake and I do want to eat it. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 <laughs> Boris. You, you've been poisoning my quick fire round. All right, Sorry, if I, if I ruined your one quick... season. One season. Spring. 
Spring. He's gone for a completely different one. No, now. it's a compromise between <laughs> winter and summer. Uh, favorite Polish food? A pierogi. I like pierogi. If you had to be one Polish person living right living. now, who would you be? Gosh, that's a difficult one. I don't know. Mateusz Morawiecki, probably. Because I just like to be a prime minister. <laughs> I do feel like Nicholas, in a different reality, almost certainly would have been a prime minister. Well, I would. Yeah, I would actually, I always wanted to be prime minister uh, in England, obviously. Yes. Yes. Um, and I knew people at university who did get very close to being prime ministers. It wasn't such a mad dream after all. If you would vote for Nicholas for prime minister of Poland, or just to replace uh, Mateusz Morawiecki, the current uh, prime minister of Poland, uh, or the prime minister of England in Nicholas's case, uh, you can write in the comments below, and also you can comment on everything he's just talked about in his quick fire round. And the final question is, which historical non-living person from Poland would you have liked to have been? I, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, more, that's a more difficult one. I know probably Jan Sobieski. Mm. It would be good to be a king. I've never been a king in my life. Have I'm you had not. a sword? No, I haven't, but I, I think I quite like dressing up in the military uniform. If you'd like to see Nicholas in a military uniform, you know where to do it, which is to write in the comments below and, and let him know that. And maybe even buy him a uniform. If, if someone can buy you a man bag, presumably they could also buy you a full... Well, I'd rather they didn't buy me a man bag, but actually they had to buy me a bag. They, if, you look at, if you go and look at the British Army Cavalry, they have some nice little bags which came as part of the uniform. So I could actually... <laughs> I think they're called um, Sabrash or something. That's quite good. I, I could I, have one of those. I'm loving this. He said he didn't want a man bag, but now he's decided that... Yeah, actually, but as a cavalry officer, it's, 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 it, that's an important okay. kit, you know, from the 19th century. That's L okay. Lawyers just kind of changing the goalposts moving along. What about uh, if you were Prime Minister, what one thing would you change about Poland and why? I would make it easier for young people to start businesses, and I would lower the burden of tax and regulation and indeed national insurance on young people and on people starting businesses. I think it, the, the whole system in Poland bites too severely at the lower end. And if you don't stimulate people starting new businesses, you get nowhere. Oh, that was a good answer, a very free market answer. DJ, kill the quickfire round. <laughs> so Nicholas, you're, you're writing, you're blogging, where can we find you online? Well, online you can find, you can find me at www.thepolishedlawyer.com. I see the pun there. Yes, there is a pun there. And I must confess, it wasn't my title. And I thought people would mock me for having that title, but somebody said, no, in your case, you get away with it, so that's fine. <laughs> and I also, I also put it on LinkedIn, and I also put it on Facebook, and a couple of Facebook groups as well. And you've talked about it briefly, but just come back to And also, sorry, the, the blog is also available on polandaily.com as well. Ah, okay, well, we'll, we'll get on to that in a second. Yeah. So what kind of topics are you covering? Because you talk about legal issues in Poland. I, occasionally, I, I generally try to talk about sort of um, current affairs issues, but where they, if I can find a, a, an English-Polish angle, I talk about those. But often it's just whatever's happening in the world more probably slightly foreign Poland in, in the world, more foreign policy angle. What that was your favourite article so far? Actually, the, the, the most popular. The, the most popular one was one I wrote uh, a few years ago about uh, the presidential elections, and 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 Miss Gornick was was standing as a candidate, um, and and people have been very rude about it. So I wrote something quite nice, and then somebody tweeted. Forget GQ and forget Playboy on the presidential elections. Read the Polish lawyer, <laughs> and that was when I acquired lots of lots of readers. I, I really recommend Nicholas. He's a fantastic writer. Uh, if you had to offer some advice for uh, companies coming into Poland, let's say, obviously in your role as yeah. Chamber of Commerce, you see this all the time from the UK. Uh, what would that be? Well, what, the advice. The, sorry, the main advice would be to think in the same way you would think at home and take proper advice. So go and see a lawyer. Go and see an accountant. Try and stay clear of, and they're less frequent now than they used to be. But try and clear. Stay clear of these Mr. Fixers or Miss Fixers and these snake oil salesmen who tell you you've got to pay money to X, Y, and Z to get things done. It's not actually true. You can do everything legitimately. Sometimes it takes a bit longer than other times, but there's no need. So essentially behave as you would at home. Don't think you're on holiday because it's Poland or these people are uh, you know, somehow going to be easy to deal with. And also the other thing is get everything in writing. Have evidence. Because in Poland there's a totemic love of bits of paper. So always get as many bits of paper as you possibly can. Have you had any sort of juicy disaster that's befallen a customer or client of yours no, as not, a result of not, dropping some paper down the back of it? No, I think just sometimes people have been very upset they can't get the result they want because they didn't think of doing it properly the first time round, or the taxman sort of makes their life difficult and it's their own fault because they didn't have that. I mean, less so now, but in the early days, intercompany loans were quite a problem for a lot of companies because it's quite common uh, in other countries that you sort of group all your your company's loans together. It doesn't matter. The paperwork doesn't have to really catch up with the reality. Whereas in Poland, the paperwork is in fact more important than the reality. <laughs> and, and, and so people in the areas were transferring money hither and yon, as you would in a normal commercial environment. 
quite legitimately, but in Poland, because they didn't have the, the paperwork to match it, then they found they got into all sorts of pickles. So as you say, Poland has advanced and it's definitely a developed business, uh, modern business uh, economy. Uh, what one thing do you miss from the UK that you can't get here? Well, the one thing, I, I, cream crackers. I mean, you probably can get them here, but I'm talking <laughs> about getting them easily. And, you know, even if you find a packet of cream crackers, if it costs 10 quid or whatever it costs, you think somehow I've, I've lost the enthusiasm for them now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, again, uh, if you have some cream crackers and you'd like yeah. to trade with Nicholas... And, and, and cheddar cheese. Oh, well, you can kind yeah, of I know get a pretty decent cheddar. Yeah, I'm just talking about it on every street corner. Times have changed. So yes. we can find you at Poland Daily on your blog, which is... Well, uh, well, or on my blog, yes. It's www.thepolishlawyer.com. Keep an eye out for Nicholas Richardson. And you can probably find me on Facebook as well, because I also put the blog on Facebook. Oh, well, there you go. The yeah, and under my own name, which is rather unusual can, for Facebook. Can, can I call you the Polish James Bond? You, you can. Some in, people in do, a, actually, yeah. So you can just call me James Bond. You don't need to be necessarily Polish. And you also uh, do these business networkers as well. Let's talk about that. You, do, are you still doing those, the professionals? So we do them also? generally every Wednesday. I mean, Promo this, Nicholas. Go yeah, well, it. there's a thing called Professionals in Warsaw. We meet every Wednesday in a different bar or restaurant and have a drink and a chat. No membership, no, 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 nothing to pay. Just turn up and, and meet people and have a chat. So you could meet the Polish James Bond. You could meet you, me in person, yes, if, it, you, if you it, wanted if to. If you go yes. that, bring either a man bag, a 19th century uh, cavalry uniform, or some uh, crackers. And or you can up. just bring, you know, you can just bring yourself and a smile. That's that works as well. I like that. I like that very much. Nicholas, you've been a fantastic guest. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me. Remember, you can find Nicholas online in all the places we've just mentioned. And don't forget to check out the rest of the High Polska shows, which have been fantastic. Frankly, I'm loving this new series. And make sure you share this episode anywhere you find it, your mofos, on the internet, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. Have I missed any? I have no idea. You, you, you have far more than I ever use. I've only got four fingers left, so if any internet geeks out there want to create a new social media channel, you can do. And I'll see you next time for the next episode of High Posca.